Okay.
time to make it through the week, and we're here to help inject some fun and cash into your day with Swag Bucks Live, the mobile game show where you win money from the comfort of your phone. I'm your producer, Hal. Hello. Off to the side, and my voice is here for the usual deal. I ask the questions, you answer them, you win money, I show you the grand prize. There it is. That is $500, and you will win your share by correctly answering 10 multiple-choice questions about a variety of different topics. If you missed it, I am off to the side because I have to run the game and talk to you at the same time. Uh, we are giving our hosts the week off to limit some exposure during this time, so it's going to be a little different here. But I'll tell you what's the same, and that is that your patience will be rewarded later in the game via bonus SB. So be on the lookout for a special icon in the top left-hand corner of the screen and get those questions right to score the bonus, whether you've been eliminated or not. Now, you have to claim the SB at the end of the game to keep them unless you win it all, and then they're added automatically. Now, I told you before that we were going to be doing things a little bit different. We wanted to bring you some comfort and some levity, and part of that is by randomly showing you images like this one. Look at that. Look at that little blep cat. It's adorable. Who could be stressed looking at that cat who is wearing a hat that is cat ears? Who knows? There's a lot of meta stuff going on. Let's get rid of that for right now. All systems are go around here, so the comments will also go, and that means all of us can go into question number one. Here it is. What is the name of the undergarment used to shape and slim the body? Is it a corset, a coronet? Or a corsage. 17,000 people weighing in right now. Do they know the answer? Let's find out. Any piece of clothing that requires you to hold your breath to wear it cannot be good for you. I, gotta, I can't stress this enough yet. Somehow, for centuries, people have squeezed themselves into corsets. Corset is the answer. 96% of you knew that one. No big surprise there. That's almost 16,000 out of 17,000 plus players in this game that know their bodice wear. That's not a bodice. That's something different. Those of you who uh, picked corsage, that is the official flower of prom. You remember the corsage, the boutonniere? They go together like peanut butter and jelly in a tuxedo and a gown. And that is what it's about. You know what else it's about? Images like this one. Throw one up there, Matt. Look at that giant dog. Is that a dog? It's like a giant dog. That, that, there's no way, that is a person in a dog suit with another person just dressed normal. That's all I can imagine is going on here. That might be the largest, most adorable dog ever. Let's get that dog out of here, though, because we got to get into question number two. Here it is. Which of these is a color you would not find in a bag of rainbow carrots? Is it purple, orange, or neon green? Which of these is not in the standard rainbow carrot bag? See, each color of carrot has a different health benefit. If you didn't know this, purple carrots slow blood clotting. Red carrots contain the cancer fighter lycopene, and neon green carrots, well, they just don't exist. If you see a neon green carrot, run, head for the hills. There is something weird going on there. Watch Chernobyl on HBO and then go up to a neon green carrot and tell me it's okay. You do not want to eat those things. Have we learned nothing from the opening uh, credits of The Simpsons, Matt? Have we learned nothing at all? Very dangerous. All right, let's move on right now to question number three. Here it is. The continents broke off of a supercontinent with what name? Is it pan flute, pan pizza, or pangea? Which pan was a supercontinent? Do you know this one? So if you were to take all seven continents and turn them into puzzle pieces, you would notice that they sort of fit together. And that is because they were all part of Pangea. Pangea is the answer. Do you ever have that thing where you have a puzzle and the one piece you think you know where it goes and it doesn't quite fit no matter how many times you turn it around and it lines up right? I think that's Australia. I think if you took Australia and you looked at Pangea, it wouldn't quite fit. So what I'm saying is you're going to have to bang Australia with your fist to get it into place on Pangea. But I guarantee you they all fit. Continental Drift took them apart. And yet... Maybe one day they'll come back together for a summer reunion. I'd love to see the t-shirts for that. All right, here is question number four coming your way right now. In the U.S. Civil War, what two sides were fighting? Is it north and south, east and west, or inside and outside? Who fought in the U.S. Civil War? A little history for you. This is the bloodiest conflict in U.S. history that saw over 620,000 people killed, which is roughly equal to every other U.S. war combined. The Union Army of the North fought the Confederate Army of the South. 
That is your answer, north and south. 96% of you, again, we're holding steady. We're looking smart. We're feeling good. We got a couple people rejoining, but that's okay. Maybe you slipped, maybe you sneezed, maybe you thought it was a battle between east and west. But no, it was the north, aka the Union, and the south, aka the Confederacy. There you go. That is your, you know what else? Let's see a cute animal. Just throw one up there for me. Look, there's a three shot. This is the glamour. This, this animal went to Sears and got these done, which is really nice. Does anybody know what animal this is? I know, but I'm not telling. Ring in in the comments if you think you know what animal that is. And ring in again if you would give it a nice pat on the head, because it looks like it would be very excited to receive one from you. Don't do that. could be dangerous. All right. Question number five. Here it is. Six standard eight studded Lego bricks can be combined in approximately how many ways? Is it one, one hundred, or one billion? How many different combinations can you make with just six bricks? See, part of the reason why Lego toys have endured so long is their versatility, and this proves it. Those six bricks can be configured in almost one billion different ways. Oh my goodness, this was a toughie. Only 36% of you getting that one right. One billion seems like just a crazy out there number, but it is true. They figured it out mathematically. Don't ask me how. I was not in the room, but that is the answer. Almost one billion different ways. And I see so many of you coming back in the game right now. We've already got almost 7,000 of you back in here. That's what I love to see. you still got those free rejoins from the second chance week we did during the birthday. Love seeing that too, because almost 6,500 of the people who have come back in this game have done it using a free rejoin. And to you, I applaud you. I'm going to do it. That's me. That's a weak applause, because I don't want to drop the tablet. But I would be clapping harder if I could. All right, let's move on. To question number six. Here it is. A word or phrase that reads the same backwards as forwards, like civic or kayak, is known as what? Is it a paragraph, a palindrome, or a pocket knife? What is it? What is that called? Do you know? Entire phrases like a man, a plan, a canal, Panama, and Madam, I'm Adam, also fit this description, as do names like Bob, Otto and Anna, they are all examples of palindromes. Yes, palindromes, you got it. You're as smart as a mom or a dad. Two more palindromes. That's 98% of you clocking in and getting the right answer on that one. Very impressive. Real bunch of grammarians here. I feel like every time we have a grammar question, and there are a number of them, some of which I have written, you always do extremely well. This is no different. So why don't we just move right on into question number seven. Here it is. Who created the characters of Miss Marple and Hercule Poirot? Was it Agatha Christie, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, or Edgar Allan Poe? Who created those characters? Two very well-known mystery characters. Very impressive. This writer of mysteries was highly successful and prolific in her work, and her characters are still popular today. You see them in TV, you see them in movies. Miss Marple and Hercule Poirot came from the mind of, who else? Agatha Christie. Of course. Wow. We had 73% of you get that one right. That means about 27% of you can rejoin. You have that opportunity now. We're going to wait. I'll wait. Let you rejoin. Do you have a fan? Are you a fan of one of these? Which do you prefer? Do you like the Hercule Poirot, like the buttoned-up detective, or do you like the elderly woman who solves crimes? Because, you know, we, we, get a, we get a good flavor of crime solvers. According to TV, anybody can solve a crime. I'll tell you what. We have almost 1,000 people back in the game. That is good enough for me. I know you want to move on. I know especially... You want to get into question eight, and that's because it's worth two bonus SB. That is right, two bonus SB. Here it is, question number eight. Which rapper's real name is Chris Bridges? Is it Ludacris, Ice Cube, or 50 Cent? Who is actually Chris Bridges? What is his professional name? So his rap name was born out of his real name, which he uses when acting in TV and film. Apparently, his rhymes are so crazy that he's not just Chris, he's Ludacris. Luda is the answer. 75% of you, well done, getting that one right. You know you're Ludacris, you know you're Chris Bridges, you know you're hip-hop. You know he started out as a DJ on Hot 100 in Atlanta after being an intern there. So he worked his way up. He played a bunch of other people's music that came out with his own. Super successful dude. Seems to be a nice guy. I, You know what, I'm just going to go out on a, on a, on a ledge here and... Just wish the best for him. All right, let's move on to question number nine. Got another two bonus SB for you. Here it is. Question nine. 
Which cartoon bear is always stealing picnic baskets? Is it Hair Bear, Yogi Bear, or Winnie the Pooh? Name that bear. Do you know your cartoons? Did you watch this guy growing up? Question for you. At what point will people just stop bringing picnics to Jellystone Park? Has the word not gotten out that they'll be swindled out of their meal by Yogi Bear is smarter than the average bear? That's right. Oh, yes, 7,396 people. Oh, this is my favorite part. You made it this far, and as Boo Boo would say, you're ready for our final question, Yogi.
everybody. Uh, it's me, Hal Lublin, the producer of Swipe Butts Live. If you watch our first game and you're wondering why I'm here instead of a host, it's because we told them to sit out for a little while to limit exposure. As we all know, we're dealing with a pandemic right now, and the information seems to be shifting from minute to minute, if not hour to hour, day to day. And because of that, we've had to do some number of buttons. So today's show is going to be a little different. I'm going to be right off to the side here, leaving the questions into the microphone and talking you through this. Uh, I don't know what shape the game will take as we move forward. A lot of that's going to depend on how things develop, uh, but we're going to do our best to keep it coming uh, in whatever form that we can. And we're going to try to be sort of a respite from all of the anxiety and news that we're all inundated with as we go through this together. So remember to wash your hands, don't touch your face, and if you can stay away from groups of people and stay away and do some social social distancing, that's a good thing. We're here from you. We're here for you. We're even less than six feet away. It's okay, because I'm inside your phone. We can't infect one another. Let's have a good time. Matt, give me two minutes. Swagbucks Live, number two. This is the mobile game show where you win money from the comfort of your phone. I'm your producer, Hal. The voice from... Oh, come on, Matt. Really? Look, we all have pictures we're not proud of. I bet we all have one where our head looks like a peanut M&M. That was long before I worked here. I'm pretty sure I'm wearing bronzer. It was done in somebody's apartment. My uh, commercial agent at the time told me that they were looking for people to play construction workers. Don't know why I didn't get more jobs. Anyway, get that out of here. I'm here to hold your hand as we walk together through this forest of trivia in search of our grand prize, which I'm going to show you right now. I've got $1,000, that is right, and if you can correctly all 10 of my multiple choice general trivia questions, then you're going to be splitting our prize with anyone else who can do the same. Now there are bonus SBs sprinkled throughout the game, just look for questions with a special icon in the top left hand corner and get those right. You'll get the bonus SB even if you've already been eliminated, but you do have to stay until the end of the game to claim them. Very important if you want to keep them. I bet you do. If you win the whole game, you get them automatically, and let me tell you, I've been here since the beginning. That's what I recommend. You're getting a pro recommendation. Now, I told you this was about easing your mind and 
and distracting you from all the craziness out there. And what better way to do it than with derpy animals? Matt, will you show us a derpy animal? Look at that. It's a hedgehog in socks. Just a baby hedgehog keeping its feet warm. We can all relate to that. I will say that hedgehog has nicer socks than I ever owned. And I got into the sock game. Maybe too late. Good job, hedgehog. You bested me this time. All right. I think we've reached a clearing in this forest. And guess what? It's the clearing of the comments so that you're ready to nail our first question. Here it is. Your warm-up, question number one. What awards are given out for excellence in recorded music? Is it the Oscars, the Grammys, or the Cleos? Do you know your awards for music? I'm singing it to you. Each year since 1959, the Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences have assembled the biggest stars in the music industry to give out the Grammy Awards. You knew it was the Grammys. They just happened recently. A little gramophone, those awards you get. A lot of people are multiple-time Grammy winners. Who's your favorite Grammy winner of all time? Do you have a favorite Grammy performance of all time? I see that over 91% of you got that one right. You know your awards. The 4% who picked the Cleos, that's for advertising. And those of you who picked the Oscars, that is for film. They do give out music awards. But it's not excellence in recorded music. It's excellence in film achievement. That's its original song. Already, we had some people who came in a little late, but they've rejoined. That means they are on track to have a shot to win this game. And boy, you are here just in time, because guess what? Our next question is worth one SB. One bonus SB, that is. Question number two. Here it is. Which of these foods is made by adding bacteria to milk in a controlled fermentation process? Is it yogurt, jelly beans, or mashed potatoes? Which could it be? Foodies, where you at? If you eat this food, you can always say that your meals have culture. <laughs> you get it? Culture? You know, because because of the live cultures and yogurt? You get it. I know you get it. And great, almost 99% of you got that one right. Very impressive. What a showing. Not surprised at all. We know our food. We love our food. And the only bacteria we're interested in eating is the kind we can get in yogurt. Culturel. A lot of people love that stuff. Anyway, let's move on. To question number three, it's worth one bonus SB. Here it is. Sin City is the nickname for what U.S. city? Is it Salt Lake City, Albany, or Las Vegas? Where is Sin City? Where would you be going if you're visiting Sin City? Let me ask you, what other nickname would you give a city founded by gangsters that's loaded with booze, gambling, and nightclubs? Even though it's family-friendlier, Las Vegas is still Sin City. That is right. It is a city that never sleeps, much like New York, but for different reasons, maybe. And hey, it looks like 97% of you are on board. You have been there. You know that what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Well done. The 3% of you or so that got out, you're almost all back in. And hey, I just want to reward you for being correct and for coming back in with this animal. Just take a look. Look at my I'm just a little scrunchy puppy. I just want to kiss on my nose is what I want. That's probably what that dog sounds like. You can take it to the bank. All right, worth one bonus SB. Here is question number four. According to the rhyme, in what year did Columbus sail the ocean blue? Is it 1492, 2002, or 1982? In what year did Columbus sail the ocean blue? Setting out in search of a western route to China, Columbus stumbled upon this <coughs> continent, and it all happened because... In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. 1492 is the answer. 98% of you checking in correct on that one. You made the voyage successfully. Another 2% of you or so might have got a little seasick. Maybe you fell overboard, but you can climb back in with a rejoin right now and keep going. And hey, if you don't want to, and you're just a bonus SB kind of person, we're here for that too. Keep playing. There's more bonus SB like this one in question number five. Which of the following phrases is what's known as an oxymoron, postage stamp, jumbo shrimp, or hocus pocus? Which one is an oxymoron? I know you're all great at grammar. You probably know that an oxymoron puts two contradictory words in conjunction with one another, which is only ridiculous when you think about it. I mean, a jumbo shrimp? Come on, what are we talking about here? Shrimps are small, they can't be jumbo. And they can't be a shrimp jumbo either, that makes even less sense. Because jumbo, well, that's not a noun. 83% of you getting that one right. We lost about 16% of you on that one. I already see you coming back in, though. I didn't even need to tell you to do it. 
that's how good you are. You are ready, you're prepared, you're locked in, you're in the zone. 2,300 people back in the game. That means we have almost 18,000 people right now vying for a grand prize to get a piece of it for themselves. And hey, how about a piece of cute animal for everybody? What do you think? Look at this guy. Is that a yak? Look at this yak. Just a yak eating some grass, living its life. And if it's not a yak, then that dog needs to go to the vet because it has horns coming out of its head. All right, let's move on. With one bonus SB, here is question number six. What is the sum of all natural numbers from 51 to 100? Is it 3,775, 5,050, or 4,025? Do you know your math? Do you know what they all add up to? This might be the kind of math problem you were asked to solve when you were in school. And hey, if you want to save your kids the agony, just tell them that the answer is 3,775. Yes, that is the answer. Whoa, only 17% of you got the right answer. 2,800 of you. That means I got 83%. I need to come right back in this game and do that. You are right now over 9,000 people, over 10,000 back in this game. That's what I like to see. Don't let this be your swan song. Don't subtract yourself from this game. We are not a divided group. We are going to add ourselves together, and that equals fun and winnings for all. Multiplication. I just wanted to get it in there, all four functions. They didn't have one for that. Loaded and ready to go. But what I do have is one bonus SB for all of you who are playing along. Here's question number seven. What's the name of the lion from Chronicles of Narnia? Is it Mufasa, Simba, or Aslan? Who is the lion in the Chronicles of Narnia? The Chronic what goes of Narnia? He sacrifices himself for the good of Narnia, only to rise again to lead the armies of the good. Everyone's favorite gentle lion, you know, it's Aslan. 91% of you getting that right. Now we're back on track. We're looking good. Those 9% of you that picked Mufasa and Simba, you know those names, but it's because they're from the Lion King. They're not from the Chronicles of Narnia. You may remember Aslan in the most recent films, played by Liam Neeson. He was a lion with a very specific set of skills, and he was willing to use them to help the armies of the good. Because that's just the kind of game. Can we just see another animal? I feel like it's animal time right now. Look at those two lovebirds. Oh, those birds love each other so much. Oh, I love it. I love love. I love cuddling birds. I'm here for all of it. Oh, we're going to get through this, people. Okay, let's get to question number eight with one bonus SB. Here it is. Who was the pretty woman in the 1990 film with Richard Gere? Was it Meg Ryan, Sandra Bullock, or Julia Roberts? Who was the pretty woman walking down the street? She had already been working at this point, but starring as Vivian Ward was her career launch pad, earning Julia Roberts her first ever Oscar Nomination she won later on, of course, for Aaron Brockovich, as we all remember. One of the biggest stars in the world. That was where it all began. Pretty woman. She will reach in to get the necklace so that he can snap the box out and she'll go, <laughs> She did that better than anybody, and that is what won her the role. 97% of you knew that. Well done. Let's move on. Right now, we got question number nine. It's worth one bonus SB. You're doing so great. We are almost there. Here it is, Q9. Which grunge band had their first hit with Smells Like Teen Spirit? Was it the Beatles, Nirvana, or the Jackson 5? Do you know your grunge music? Do you know any of the lyrics to this song? You know, nobody knew what to do when this song debuted. I remember seeing it on Headbangers Ball, but that, that, that wasn't right. Was it rock or heavy metal? Turns out it was neither, but a new genre of music pioneered by Nirvana. Yes, that is right, Nirvana. That is it right there. Yes, 11,000. 468 of you got that question right, and you know what that means? You're ready for our final question. If you had fun playing this game, tell your friends about it. Post to social media with the hashtag SBLive and include your share link. If people sign up with it, you will get a free rejoin. I saw a back into the game, and those people, a lot of them, are now vying for a piece of our grand prize. Very exciting. You get it by referring people to the app. That link, you can get it from the main menu of the app, and then just share it. So many people are going to be looking for stuff to do. Why not send them here to play this game with us? Now, before we get to the final question, I have a great opportunity for those of you out there who like money. I mentioned it before. I'm talking about it again. If you want a fun way to get into investing, you got to try Stash. When you set up your account, you'll get 
5500 SB, that is $55. And when you deposit your first $5, Stash will add $5. So that means 10 bucks, ready for you, set it and forget it. You're making money. Well, your money makes more money, and you're getting money on top of that $55 just to try out investing in a safe and low-pressure way. It's so great, and it's only for our U.S. players. You have to be in the U.S., and you have to be joining Stash for the first time. Give it a try. It is all online, and see what happens. I bet it's good stuff. Okay, here we are. 11,515 people left in the game. Over 20,300 watching from home. And that means almost 9,000 of you are going to be playing for the bonus SB here. Who knows how much you've racked up in this game. I'm proud of all of you. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad we were here together for this game. But now it's time to get to our final question with one bonus SB. Question number 10. What company has a vehicle called the Wienermobile that tours the country? Is it Oscar Mayer, Citibank, or KFC? Who has the Wienermobile? Who does it belong to? Do you know? It's shaped like a giant hot dog, and people come running when they see it, so they can meet the hot doggers driving it, their official name. They get to hear some awful puns and get free Oscar Mayer hot dogs. Oscar Mayer is the answer. Yes, there it is. 11,359 of you knew that answer. And guess what? You are splitting our grand prize. So many of you winning. You are each taking home 9SB. Very proud of you. Sunshiny9, what is up? Hello, Twitster91. Leona Spivey, look at great. Black Royalty 8, I salute you, your highness. C. Durrell, great job. Art Tally, Whitmer Boys 3, did you work together? You're splitting that, be fair to each other. And Tokyo Teddy Bear 94, you are just some of the people who are splitting this grand prize. And you're getting those 9SB, like I mentioned. And what can you do with those? I will tell you, you can redeem them for PayPal Cash or gift cards to Amazon, Starbucks, Target, and hundreds of other places. Thank you all for being a part of this grand experiment. We appreciate it, and y'all did it so great. You crushed it like I knew you would. Killing the game, as Deshola would say. For Swagbucks Live, I'm your producer, Hal. Please remember, stay safe out there.